just 48 hours after lifting one of the biggest prizes in women's cricket. You can touch it, touch it. England captain Charlotte Edwards was already back to work. But after handing out a few cricketing lessons alongside her team in the World 2020 Championships, Edwards was on the receiving end this time, taking a crash course in maths with men's opener Alistair Cook to celebrate National Cricket Day. I was very, very lucky. I was supported massively through cricket at school, um, primary school, um, obviously with cricket, cricket, and then when I got into secondary school, they they allowed me to play with the boys, and um, yeah, so it's, I, you know, fond memories of playing at school and, and how much I was supported in that time. It was slightly scary. Uh kind of uh, bring back a few horrible memories of sitting in double mass lessons, but once I got into it, it wasn't too bad. Um, a good job, a little genius next to me told me all the answers. It was also the launch date of CrickEd, a resource offering teachers a range of lessons that are both cricket-based and educational. You can all learn so much in school in terms of Pythagoras' theorem or whatever we're doing, but the actual skills of life comes, I think, a lot from sport or drama, and especially you know, now we're doing a lot of sport, uh, you know, a chance to shine with the cricket, and, it, uh, you know, it's, and it's fun. And if they love it, hopefully, you know, when they you know, go to school and they join other clubs, and you know, we could, could un unearth another star. The Chance to Shine program hasn't just offered youngsters an introduction to cricket, it has also allowed the likes of Edwards the chance to continue working when she's away from the international cricket arena. It's something probably, like I say, over a year ago now that, you know, a lot of the girls are actually falling out of cricket um, at their peaks, sort of 26, 27, I think. Um, we realised then we had to maybe offer the girls some sort of um, work so they can combine their cricket. So eight girls are on these contracts. Um, we're all spread out throughout the country in our own little areas. It will take a few years for these new cricket fans to come through the ranks. Oh, catch that, catch it, catch it. Oh! But Edwards is confident the current crop of England players can add more silverware to their trophy cabinet. We have got a very settled team which we've kept together now for the, for the last couple of years. Um, from within the squad, we just want more and more success. We've tasted this success and, and the girls are desperate for more. I think there's only more to come from those group of players. I really don't think a lot of them have hit their peak yet. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing those mature over the next few years and really seeing some of the, some of the girls make some, some world-class performances. For now, though, both Cook and Edwards have their eyes on Ashes battles. They're a good Australian team and um, we, we're going to have to do our very best this summer to, to beat them and um, you know they'll be hurting from the World Cup and, and the World 2020 so we're going to be, like I say, have to be our very best to, to beat this team. We're not going to be favourites going into the first test in terms of obviously the rankings don't lie but you know, we're, you know in our home conditions if you know, we can get that ball swinging and uh, you know, we've definitely got ourselves a very good chance. Alistair Cook and Charlotte Edwards there down in Hackney with a lot of lucky school children. Uh, Claire, you must be absolutely delighted with this Chance to Shine programme and what it's done for women's cricket in particular. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the Chance to Shine scheme generically is fantastic. It's the biggest sports development initiative in the whole country across any sport. Um, you know, and obviously cricket's so dear to our hearts. So when we were able to introduce Chance to Shine coaching contracts for the England players last year, um, it was obviously something that we, we really wanted to do. And we think it's played a massive role in the success, as Charlotte has alluded to, has made a, played a massive role part in the success the players have had since April last year. It's given eight of them the chance to have a more flexible working commitment, um, an understanding employer. If they need to go off and train or if, if something happens in their cricket schedule out of the ordinary, then of course the cricket takes priority, uh, mm. but that's obviously not to demean their actual coaching commitments. The, you know, they... the current crop of girls, the girls that we've seen playing today, uh, a number of them have got the chance to shine contracts over a, a number of hours per week. They're not all fully, fully employed though, are they? No. No, so, no, they're, um, they're ECB Cricket Foundation contracts um, through Chance to Shine. Some of them do 20 hours a week, some of them do 10 hours a week, just depending on what balance they wanted and what other part-time work they wanted to pursue as well. Someone like Claire Taylor, the world's number one batsman, decided not to go down that route. She wanted to keep a distinction between her cricket life and her work life, which is completely, you know, admirable in its own right, mm. so that she could keep that complete focus on being a cricketer um, when she wasn't at work. Um, but, you know, to have someone like Charlotte Edwards doing ambassadorial stuff like that on National Cricket Day, going into schools and clubs and being a really accessible role model for young girls of all um, backgrounds and culture, you know, the, the rich cultural diversity that is England. You know, to have role models like her and Isha Gua and, and Lydia Greenway going into those schools to take the game 
is it, in, into the classroom is just brilliant. Great stuff. It's certainly working well at the moment for English women's cricket.